Jen Wong Way of the Wong, and I am back with my guest, Josh Peters of the Whiskey Jug, who is my favorite whiskey nerd to drink with. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww, it's true. And today we are doing Irish whiskeys. You can see the first episode we did, which was of Middleton um, Distillery Irish whiskeys, and today. We have a couple more Irish whiskeys for you for the month of March for St. Patty's Day. So what are we drinking today? So today we're gonna start with something that is getting onto the Irish whiskey market in a much larger way over the last couple of years, and that's an actual Irish single malt. So this is a you know very similar to American, or not American, well actually American and Scottish single malts. It's 100% malted barley and then aged in ex bourbon casks. Oh wow, there's a lot of apple on that nose. Yeah, so this is um, put out by Teeling, which is one of the newer companies on the scene. Right. And unlike a lot of, well, most Irish whiskeys, this is a non-chill filtered. So explain malt. chill filtered for our viewers at home for who may not know what that is. No. Okay, fine. Okay. You guys can look it up, it's on the internet. <laughs> Google that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so chill filtering is, it, it's, it's a lot more about the aesthetics. So the reason that a lot of uh, distillers will do it is that when whiskey is, especially when they bottle it at lower proofs like 80 or 82 or 84, it's right. going to end up to where you get this flocking in there. So as the right. bottle chills, you'll see all the oils that are in the whiskey will start to solidify and people will start freaking out and be like, oh my God, what's wrong I with my whiskey? I have floaties in yeah. my whiskey. What's wrong with it? It's like, ah, oh, just warm it up. You know, put it in the glass, hold it in your hands, they'll go back in, they'll re it. So right. in order to keep that aesthetic appearance, companies will actually go and they'll uh, chill the whiskey and then filter it out so that it takes all of those oils out. And so- but that is flavor. It is, it's flavor. It, it, it's also what gives whiskeys like this a nice rich mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. And so it adds a lot to it. So this is a non-chill filtered whiskey and it's bottled at 46% versus how most Irish are bottled at the, the bare minimum 40. 40. So you have 92 proof whiskey, non-chill filter, pure Irish single malt, no blending happening. So it gives it, this is basically the true Irish whiskey character. Pure pot still is a little bit different because they use the unmalted and the malted barley. But when you're talking about just like a pure Irish whiskey single malt character, this is it as good as you're gonna get. Mm. Yeah, just wonderful stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. Oh, that's really, really nice. See, I think when you do have that chill filtering, you lose so much of that character, especially in a pot still, you know, that you have mm -hmm. all those esters and all those things that like remain yeah. that you you don't get that in a column still. You don't get that, you know, in, in any other in any other distillation method, you know, that yeah, really it, that that, that nice, concentration character. of characters and and all of those Kind of what some people might call impurities, right? Not impurities. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, well, no, it, technically, you're right. They, they right? Are like, they, they, they are, got, they're the yeah. things that give it character, which give it taste, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's why some people would say they chill filter or they, you know, to take out yeah, the, the conjure, the bad conjures, and the congeners yeah, that are. Like all that stuff. And it just, at the end of the day, it does have an effect also, not just on the flavor and the aroma. But on the experience, that mouthfeel of, you know, having that rich, oily character. Absolutely. It removes it and you end up having uh, whiskeys that sometimes when they are aggressively chill filtered and bottled at, you know, just 80 proof, they're weak and watery and, you know, they might still have an okay flavor and everything, but they're just, they're not as fun to drink. When you have something like this where it's just rich and thick, it's so much more fun to drink. That is an excellent description of this. It is rich and and thick. It's like one of those things that also lingers on your tongue. We talked about mouthfeel a lot in the other video where we were talking about what are those things that linger at the end. And this one has so much that it kind of coats your mouth a little bit. It does. You know, mm -hmm. in a in a lovely way. You know that oh yeah, this is a it long has that finish. long it's just finish. Keep it just keeps going, going and, and going. going. It's yeah. the Energizer Bunny of, Absolutely. of whiskey. It's so good. That's so fun for Irish. I, I feel like we don't get a lot of that in Irish whiskey. No, it's usually, almost everything is bottled at 40%. I mean, almost everything that, probably, I think actually everything might have, that we tried on the last one was all 40%. 
think so. Uh, I think, I believe both of these. Yep, both of these are 40% right here. Um, everything, all the blends are 40%. I'm like, so it's still there. It is, it's, it's just gonna going to keep going and yeah. going. And then this one being a higher proof and non-chill filtered, it really bucks the trend mm. and gives you something new, different. And even though it's not really that innovative, but for the category, it's incredibly innovative. Oh yeah, and for the category. Like I said, I don't yeah. know another Irish whiskey that, and you find that in, in scotches all the time. Yeah, or, and that's you know. a big thing. And, and that's the thing, like a, a category that has had so little innovation mm -hmm. over the years that even doing something like this, like higher proof, no chill filtering, is so innovative because now you're tasting that, you know, you're tasting that spirit at, at just the way it should be tasted. And yeah. it's so lovely. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. No, that's beautiful. When you add a little water, does it cloud up? So you get that, um, you get that, that dispersion effect when you add a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. So if you take it and you, you put a couple of drops in, you'll get, you can watch the whole chemical reaction. You can watch everything start changing. You can see the oils, everything move inside of it. Mm. And it's a wonderful when you watch that effect. Right. When it goes I in there. I love that. I love um, that with a couple drops of water. Red breast 12 cast strength. That one's also non-chill filtered. Uh -huh. So I know that one for a fact. And it's cask strength. So and it's, it's going to be strength. at a yeah. higher proof. Yeah. And that one, same thing. You know, you add some water and you, you can just watch see that effect. The, everything yeah. goes and you starts can start smelling a lot more of the aromas because right. everything starts moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful experience. Oh, I love, love that. that whiskey. What's next? Let's go to the next one. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of innovations. So this is actually um, something that's been around for a long time. Bushmills 21 has been around for forever. Well, Bushmills, I mean. I know, it's the oldest distillery. Right. Well, oldest license to distill. Oh. Let's just make that clarification. Let's make the that clarification. license to distill. <laughs> Everyone was making it in their backyards. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, the Bushmills 21. It's uh, aged in bourbon and sherry cask and then finished in Madeira cask. So it's oh, a wow. That's three, three how casks. many woods? Three woods. Three woods. And this is the older style bottle. I love that. I love the classic bottlings of things. I love, well, I, you know, I'm a graphic design nerd. I also like just labels and things like that. And it just has that classic bush mills, even the shape of the bottle mm -hmm. with the squaring off the ends. Like it definitely has that old yeah, school bush mills. Oh, wow. What is that? I'm it's like a, see this flavor, I always call it like the biscuit flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't know how to describe that other, like it's kind of buttery. And I, th I think that comes, I, I find it mostly in bourbon. So I think that's the bourbon cast that's coming through is this biscuit thing that I'm getting. Yeah, you get, yeah it's that, it's almost like biscuit, buttered biscuits with a little bit of like fruit compote on it, like that type of thing. Yeah. Yes, so I'm not crazy, right? No. Like that's a- No, that's totally, you get that in there. And I think that's a little bit the Madeira cask too. Oh yes, that yeah, the those, nutty. That, yeah, yeah. It adds that aspect, but the right. the bourbon casks are definitely responsible for a lot of those big fruity flavors. The more like tropical and orchardish fruits yes. come from the bourbon cask. Then right. You got the sherry cask, which give you those dark dry. Sometimes you're like, is that banana? Yeah, and like yeah. yeah, totally. And bananas in totally. there. Totally. And then yeah. the sherry cask give you those dry dark fruits and things. And mm -hmm. then the Madeira gives it that nice sweet kick. Right. Almost like a like a Speyside whiskey kind of sweetness, like a Glamourangi or something, like that kind of level of sweetness kick. Yes. Sultanas. If so, we were, oh if yes. we were gonna be whiskey, we're gonna be super nerd, sultanas. the sultanas are Taste present. Like sultanas, mm. gold raisins. Or gold raisins. Like, yeah. Oh wow, the nose on it so is good. so different from everything that we've tasted. All the other ones, you get a lot of those, you get the apple, you get, um, a lot of the um, caramel and stone fruit kind of notes that you yeah. that you you would identify with these types of whiskeys. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of that in all of the other ones that we've tasted, but this one has an, an additional, like even a saltiness. I would say, not not a saltiness in the same, not that iodine saltiness that you get in. Like, in right, but right. But, I know what you mean, but like, but it's like, like a buttery, like like salted butter, like kind salted of butter, like of a deal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, like salted butter. Mm -hmm. So it it has a more savory quality to it than the oh, other definitely. ones do. Like all the other ones this have like a sweet quality to it. Like it finishes more like a dessert. Like you get that brown sugar, you get the fruit, 
And this yeah, one has this is, like a savory kind of oh, totally. it has finish that nice to it. Savory chewiness to it. Yes. It's lovely, lovely. And this is this is the one that I really, really wish Bushmills would bottle at a higher proof. Mm. Forty like this, like just do it like forty six. <laughs> please. Just, just Bushmills, like if for some reason more. you see this video, please I mean I'm gonna send it to you of course. Come on. Uh, please. Obviously. <laughs> this is my plead. Bottle this at a higher proof. It's yeah. just such a good whiskey that deserves. It deserves that. It deserves, it deserves to be non-chill filtered. It deserves to have a higher proof. It deserves to have, be presented in the most amazing form it could possibly be. Because even in this right. form, it's an absolutely lovely whiskey. It's beautiful. It's, just it's really, exquisite. really beautiful. It's well built. It has great structure to it. And even though yeah. this is from 2006, like the, the current bottles taste the exact same. Like There is no difference between them. They've done fantastic. such a good job with this whiskey over the years that, you know, it just deserves that type of, that level, that next level of care. Right. Or and, and presentation. I, know, I shouldn't say care. It's it has a number on it. Presentation. The 21, what does that refer to? To the youngest aged whiskey in there. So there's whiskeys probably most likely a little bit older, you know, maybe 23, 25 years, but the youngest whiskey in there is aged 21 years. Wow. That's amazing. It's a whiskey that's old enough to drink itself. Yeah, it is. And order itself at the bar. <laughs> I want a glass of me. I would like a glass of myself, please. Mm -hmm. Well, if it has to go through that many barrels, I would think it would need to be aged yeah. that long. Since it's absolutely it's aged in three, four. Three. Three. Yeah, three so different barrels. Yeah, bourbon, sherry, and then finished in Madeira. Do they do it as different blends of that, or is it is it the same whiskey moving through? different barrels. Do you know? That's a good question. Because you know, sometimes they'll do- Sometimes it was like half bourbon, half, half bourbon, sherry. Half bourbon, half sherry. We're blend. gonna blend in, you know, that it does become a mixture of mm -hmm. those, as opposed to here's the same whiskey. It started in a barrel. It started in a bourbon barrel, moved its way into sherry and then finished in Madeira. I think it's, I think it's that one where they take the bourbon and the sherry because it's, it's as a combination. Mm -hmm. but you know what? Don't take my word on that. We should, we should ask Bushmills. I'm, yeah, we should. Let's look that up. <laughs> I'm just curious. Cause that, you know, I'm always curious at the process because that changes it a little bit. It does. You know? Oh no, it absolutely does. If you first age it in, bur uh, in a bourbon barrel for say 10 years. Right. Then the next 10 years it spends in sherry. In sherry. And then the next one year it finishes in Madeira. That's going to be very different than if it spent like say 20 years in bourbon, 20 years in sherry. And then we together, married them and, and then finished it in Madeira. Yeah, right. then that, that would be very different. Because sherry is so aggressive, Right. I'm assuming it's the, it's, you know, separate barrels blended together. Because if it was a bourbon spirit, which is light and fruity, moved into it sherry barrels. It might lose barrels, all of those bourbon lose, characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. So the way, I mean, if, if it were the way I was doing it, I would definitely do it as like two separates. If Josh was making this whiskey. <laughs> that's how I would, I would take it This is how as, he would do it. I would, it. I would take the bourbon and the sherry and then blend them together so you get the best of both worlds and then marry them in the Madeira cast. Sure, and way. I would think for consistency, they would probably have to do that. It would probably help. It would probably it would help. lend itself to consistency. Because over 21 years, just like where something is in a Rick house can change the flavor yeah. entirely. Mm -hmm. Not that they call them that there, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and their barrel warehouses. Yeah, I mean, if, if you were doing them in the progression, you could lose something in there. Whereas when you're sure. doing them like this, like we need to keep this flavor consistent. All right, for this batch, these sherry barrels are a little more potent. Add a couple more bourbon barrels, keep those ratios different. For the consistent flavor. For the consistent flavor. So I think that that's probably what they're doing. Mm. That's our best guess. Best guess at the moment. <laughs> Could have done my research before, but. You know, it's more fun, to speculate. It is more fun <laughs> to speculate. And then of course, you know, someone's and, gonna watch this and they're right. like, actually, I this up is. On Google, and Google <laughs> says this and you're wrong. Like, well, we did say we were guessing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And so what is this last one? This is such, a different beast from all the other ones that we've it been drinking. It is a very different beast. So this is the only peated Irish whiskey. It's the on only the one on the market? To my knowledge. Fascinating. Thank you. You're welcome. So for our viewers at home who are not drinkers of whiskey on a regular basis, what does it mean to be peated? So when you're making a single malt, uh, it's made of 100% malted barley. To malt barley, what they do is they basically, you know, they have this 
whole floor covered in barley. They go ahead and spray with malting water. Malting floor. The malting floors. A lot of them are used. Raking the malting floor. Yeah. And then a lot of them are, you know, more automated these days. Sure, and, sure. You know, you went from the malting floor to the salad and box, and then from there you have these big industrial malting facilities. Right. But so yeah, I like the idea, though. I like the idea. Like, let's go with, let's let's go go with that, like, malting floor. It's, it's so floor. much the, more romantic. The let's, traditional. Let's, let's just play, even though we know it's not like that. Cause, so let's play Care. off of the idea that, that there <laughs> was a traditional malting floor. So yeah. you have your malting floor. You, you know, flood with water, like get cover the the barley, let it start sprouting. So that's the malting is when it starts sprouting. It's a little green on the end, right? So because then, it has to sprout in order for the enzymes to be present. Yep, and that's what helps turns getting the sugars going and right. makes all the nice chemical reactions that you know give us. Because we just put whiskey. barley and we try and make that ferment, it's just not going to do it because yeah, it doesn't have. Work. There's no sugar, sugar production for the yeast to turn into alcohol, into alcohol, et cetera. So get that going. And then the only way to stop it, that, that growth process is to heat it. So you can either just blast hot air across it, which will then stop the malt from the malting process. So it doesn't turn into a f like a whole plant. Yeah, basically. so you, you stop it in that, that mid growth process. So then, right. so you either do that or the option is you burn peat, which is just decades, hundreds, centuries year old, Plant matter has been compressed in bogs. They take it out, cut it out, dry it, burn it, and then fan that hot, smoky air across the the malted barley. That stops the process. The, that that peat smoke gets trapped in the barley. Then in the distillation, it comes out as a nice smoky aroma and flavor, which is how they make all the Isla whiskeys. Mm. That nice smoky aroma. But this not being Isla peat, Irish peat, Irish peat. It is a very different, mm. very noticeably different style of peat. There's peated American whiskeys, there's yes. peated French whiskeys, mm -hmm. there's um, even in Scotland when you get, you know, whiskeys that are peated. And even some Japanese like, ones are peated. Yep, Japanese peated right. whiskeys. And you've got, you know, peat from the Highlands versus the peat from Isla. When you're tasting them, they, they have such completely different characteristics. Right. I mean, especially Isla, because it is an island, you get a lot of this salt water quality too. You, you get, get a lot the, of the yeah, cause it's made marine from, kind of quality to right. it because of the peat that they have there is seaweed down there because yeah, you know, you're absolutely. digging down so many layers as the mm -hmm. island itself has built itself up. So you've got seaweed down there, you've got marine animals probably in there, you've got like just everything, maybe some dinosaurs. <laughs> maybe some dinosaurs. Not, not really. I mean, in, it's, in, it's not millions of year old peat, right, it's only right. tens like tens, of ten, thousands. tens of thousands of year old peat. Like imagining this is flavored with dinosaurs. <laughs> I can smell oh. the triceratops in this. But if you do like a peaty whiskey, this would satiate that. It really still has that smoky quality that you love when you love peated yeah, it's got things. a nice, yeah, it's got a very, there's a crispness to the, to the whiskey. You have all those nice apples, pears, mm -hmm. crisp orchard fruit, but then you've got that peated aspect to it, which mm -hmm. gives it almost like a burning plastic. For some people, that's it's, an off-putting description, yeah. but it doesn't have like that rubberized flavor that you sometimes associate with a Scottish peat. You yeah, know, that like Lagavulin has that. Mm -hmm. It's almost that like oily, like an oily, oily kind of, which I also thing. like well, for. It tastes like band aids <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and burnt circuit and burn boards. Right, like, exactly. Uh, I do I want to drink that? I love it. I love that flavor, but I think for some people, it's. Um, Who've never had it, it's, it's, an, it's definitely an acquired taste. It's definitely. It's very much an yeah. acquired taste. I mean, I've, I've known some people that. You know, this is like basically jumping into the deep end of the pool. So sure. I know some people that have, that's where they've started. They're like, I started with Full Froig and that's how they got into whiskey. Like they loved it. It's fascinating because then everything from there would seem so bland, I would imagine. Yeah, it's hard to get you, down to like, if you started there and you were the like, whiskeys. right, right. Yeah. But this is a nice balance. You still get all of the apple and all of those things that I like about Irish whiskey, yeah. all of that orchard fruit we were talking about. All those nice, yeah. sweet, lovely flavors. Mm -hmm. Which they also, I just remembered, they put out a cast strength version Ooh. of this not too long ago. We'll have to try that. I may that. have to pick that up for uh, for the blog for the month. That may have to be one of, I might have to, yeah. Mm. Might have to show up. See, I don't have a beer, but you can stroke yours. <laughs> <laughs> have, well, you should check the whiskeyjug.com. Mm -hmm. And you can find out all about 
quite possibly this cast strength version of this Kanmara. Probably by the end of the month. Now that it's on camera, I guess I kind of have to now. Oh, huh? yeah, now we're going to hold you to now it. Now it is. All yeah. right. Otherwise, you're going to get comments and people are going to be like, <laughs> like where's where that? is that? You dirty liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I really, really love this peat. It's lovely. It's very different. It's much more crisp, a little more subtle. This is actually one that I wasn't the hugest fan of when I first opened the bottle. And I was like, eh. Because you but, were comparing it to other peaty things, yeah, maybe? But the thing is, like, also, so oxygen really helps whiskey open up. It oxygenates. And it, it does get to the point where if you've left, like, a, a bottle at half full for way too long, you try it and it's watery, it's bland, it tastes terrible because oh. it's, it's oxidized to a sure. point of being awful. Sometimes whiskey, though, if they have a couple months, they'll open up and become much better. This is the case with the Connemara. Oh, no, this is one and of those whiskeys that, like, you pour yourself a little glass, Drink half of it, take the dogs for a walk, and you're still tasting it by the time you get home. Mm. I do. I do like that. <laughs> Good. Glad we could get to the end of that. Uh, so this was our tasting of Irish whiskeys. We're so glad you could join us. And yeah. let us know if you've tasted any of these, or if there's any you want to taste, or if there's any you think we should taste. And... Um, Otherwise, happy St. Patrick's Day and thanks for joining us. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.